Hello everyone, you are joining me on a day where we are starting back on a project that has been on the back burner for some time. It's been in the background of a lot of videos. It's been here too long. I'll be the first to say it, it's been here too long, but things have not gone smoothly with it. Things have not worked. It's a nightmare. It's this little electric micro machine. What a pain. We're gonna get it done. We've got new stuff for it. And I just wanna get it done because Number one, I'm getting worried that someone else is going to do it before me. Now, if you're new to the channel and you're thinking, what on earth is going on? Let me just show you. This is a Citroen Ami. So this is an electric car, a little micro machine, and it basically isn't a car. It's a quadricycle. It does 28 miles an hour. This is the motor for it. It's so tiny that it doesn't really work as a car. And that is one of the reasons why it's been a bit of a struggle because the reason it's here is for air suspension. Now, me being me, I had a brief look at it and thought, yeah, that'd be absolutely fine. No worries at all. We'll get that done. Easy peasy. How wrong was I? Uh, this is a quarter of the size of a normal car. And the only products that you have on the shelf available to you are car parts. So when you're trying to put car parts on a little quadricycle, nothing fits. So it's taken us a while to get to the point to get this to a low standard, like it needs to be not low standard, but high standard, low enough, and actually work as a car. <sighs> and no one's ever done it, and I know why. It's a nightmare. So today, it's finally back on the ramp. We've got new parts. It can be in bits for at least a week or so. So I finally got the time to go and do it. So what I'm hoping we can do in this video is get our new front struts on the car. Obviously, they're not a bolt on application, so we've got to make some stuff to make it work. So let's go on with it. So new strut, old strut. Now, I'll be the first to say it. This didn't work for a number of reasons, right? Technically, it worked, right? It basically bolted on. It went up and down, but it wouldn't go low enough. So I actually made raised strut tops, uh, stuff like that to make it go low enough. I made brackets that bolted onto the bottom here. Waste of time, waste of time. Unfortunately, it was a waste of time and it didn't work. Uh, the main problem with this is that this bag is a bag, but the shock actually bottoms out somewhere around here. So not only did it bottom out about here, it wouldn't even get to that point because the car is so light, it wouldn't compress this sleeve bag. So it would literally just sit to there uh, and then it wouldn't go any lower. And if you stand on it, it would then go lower. As soon as you get out of the car, picks it back up. And that's just because it couldn't compress the sleeve bag. Pain. Uh, because I spent a lot of time trying to make it go low. And then I got it to the point where it is low. And then it was so low that it wouldn't raise up. So it didn't work as a car. And that's all because of these struts. Now these struts are for a uh, Polo 6N, Mark II, Mark III Golf. They'll work fine on a Polo 6N, Mark III Golf, Mark II Golf. They'll work just fine, but on the Ami, no good. So we have these fancy struts. Now this is exactly what we should have started with before. Not only is this a double bolo bag, it is also got a port on the bottom of the strut. This one was at the side. Now this got very close to the chassis of the Ami. We also have camber adjustment. We have dampening adjustment in here, and we can also modify this lower bracket because it is steel and not welded to the shock body like this. On top of that, we can then undo this adjuster and we can wind that all the way up and down wherever we want it. So we can definitely get this car fully on the ground without any hassle whatsoever, I think. Even if these don't bolt onto the Ami, which I don't think they will, we can cut these off, weld new brackets on without having to strip the entire shock apart. Now, the reason we didn't start with these is because two of these was the same price as a full set of these front and rear. So we have a pair of these for the same price as what they did. And it was a cost thing. It would have worked, but it wouldn't have gone low enough. And that's not why it's here. If we're gonna put it on air and no one's ever done it, it has to be low. And I won't let it leave the workshop without it being low because if I go, oh, this is the 
This is the world's first bag dummy and it's not low. I'll never live it down and I won't let it happen. So yeah, we've got to get these struts on. Let's give it a try. Right, here's all three struts. This one we're going to ignore. So we're going to move this one out of the way because we will not be using this in our application. What we are going to be using is this one here. Now, this is the original strut. This actually bolts on to the strut like that. And then this body panel top mount thing basically sits up into the chassis like so. You take it out. You know what I mean? There you go. So this is a top mount for the top mount. So what we need to do is obviously get this to mount to that. Now, this is the top mount it comes with. These holes are, you know, very offset and weird shapes and angles, which is annoying to try and replicate onto something else and make it symmetrical. So I've got these top mounts here. I have a pair of them. I'll just be using the orange bit. And then obviously we go in and out with the camber easier to go onto there because this is how this one is set up as well to get this on here something like that goes on there however what we're not going to be doing is using this plate we're going to be making a new plate for ourselves if you know anything about these amis they're made extremely cheap and this is literally two mil steel and even with the standard suspension these things have been known to crack and bust through through them and going like up into the dash because inside that little pocket where this sits is the top of the dashboards. So what we're gonna do is make a new one of these in five mil with the correct PCD holes for our new top mounts. And also you'll notice this is a little bit of a divot in it. And that's because the strut is angled. So it's to compensate for the angle of the strut. Obviously our new strut here has a bearing so it can compensate for the extreme angle. So we'll make a flat piece with our own holes in it. And there we have our new top mount. This can now bolt onto there, and obviously that bolts on to there. I have to open this hole up a little bit, depending on where the bolts want to sit inside this little hole here, because those Allen keys may protrude and cause difficulty, but yeah. Hand cut this out of metal and uh, get it in the car. Gonna have to open that up a little bit for the uh, Allen keys, but we're on to a winner. Finished up, nice piece. It bolts into the army quite nicely. So uh, let's try a strut on the front of here. So, strut is in, kinda. So I always knew that this bit was gonna be a little bit of a fiddle, but this is still, so I always knew that I was gonna be able to modify it. Top bolt lines up, bottom bolt needs to be about here. This lower bolt is actually underneath the hub, but this is just for mock-up purposes only. Uh, this is what will be full height, so we can actually make full height a little bit more if we wanted to, but this is the baseline it's set. This is adjustable. So if we wanted to make the full height, you know, higher, undo this lock ring, uh, extend this lower, drop the hub down, and that'd be our max height, but then you would sacrifice low. Uh, what we need to do now is see, oh, look at that. That's gonna basically bolt into there. Bend that tab round. Uh, these struts are off for like a, 2013 WRX, I think. Not sure, but uh, let's stick a wheel on and see if it goes low enough. 
out of the box pretty much in the ballpark of exactly where we want it. Bag's fully decompressed, unlike that one. That will not decompress. That fully compresses under load of the, obviously, the axle stand. And yeah, we're pretty much in the ballpark of where we want to be. So obviously now I can now see that this adjuster collar needs to be wound up so we can get more drop. Uh, our next point of action will be that trap rod end touching the chassis and also probably a CV, but we'll, we'll have a play. I've got to put the other wheels on to mock them up and uh, you won't see those until the car's actually finished, but yeah, it's looking like it shall work. So we've got the, uh, the bigger wheel on and we obviously need to put a little bit more camber on there. And when we add a little camber, to the top of the strut, it wants to touch the inner frame. Now, the reason that wants to do that is because we're pushing this point here to that point there quite far. So if this bracket was cut off and these two holes were closer here, we would then gain the camber, but then the strut wouldn't be pushing so far that way. So we'd basically keep the wheel like that and then pull the wheel out towards it and then the strut would have plenty of room to play with and we'd still get the camber that we need to get the wheels to fit so i think it's time to cut these off but before i do that i'm going to make sure it goes plenty low enough we're trying to get this car to top rim so that's what we're going to do so basically this winds up like a normal coilover we wind this on and then we get more drop without affecting the bag and yeah everyone's happy also what i didn't say is the gap here is wider than the stock ami strut so when we take these brackets all the way off and then put them all the way in we basically save ourselves a little bit of a job uh two birds one stone because otherwise we'd have to put some shims in here which is just annoying the holes are not right, so just cut it off, start again, done. That's better now. That was actually down here, so we've lowered it about 30 mil. Let's get it back in the car. We're now tucking rim, and that works. Strut is in, fully decompressed, and we have all the height that we could possibly want. Look, wheel above the tire. Some modifications to this lower mount and that will be done. So I need to make a replica of that other top mount and then I will be moving on to cutting the struts up. Round two, let's go. Also, I need four of these. That goes in there. We need four of these in this bit here so we can then weld those onto these struts here like that you see how much further in that is compared to the the subaru strut much further and uh i could just redrill this but basically like i said before the, the the width of the hub is a lot skinnier than the strut so just make new brackets and start again right Got this cut out, that's the secondary run, ready to go. I've just started on this strut here. Now I said I wasn't gonna re-drill this, but I just thought I'd take the opportunity to re-drill it before I cut the brackets off and make them a bit skinnier that way. Uh, because I'm thinking about just doing it, bolt it on just there and see if we have enough movement for camber gain, etc., in this position. Because if that is the case, then I will make a template off of this piece here. And if that isn't the case, then I'll obviously have to move those bolts out a little bit or move this bolt out a little bit. Uh, it's a bit tricky. I'd love to just make uh, the top one like this, elongated, and then bring this one out ever so slightly. But you're also limited to the depth you can put the hub into it because obviously that radius protrudes further than this edge here. So it probably protrudes to about here. So you are limited to what you can do, but this is a good opportunity to do a test piece. So then I'll cut this edge off here now, bolt it back on to the car and see where we stand. Obviously we won't be able to do it up fully, but 
we knew that anyway. This is just a test. And this is why we test, see? Bottom hole is in, top hole is off, but we are bottomed out on here. So it won't really go in and out because the casting is touching there. But yeah, this is why we test. Now I actually, the way I measured this was, I can't get it out now. I put it up against it like this. See, we've got the top hole lined up there and we also have the bottom hole lined up there. So that's how I measured it out. But when we do it ever so slightly in, it doesn't work. So yeah, back to the drawing board. Uh, I'll elongate these a little bit, open them up a little bit and then we'll try again. We now have fully bolted in hub and uh, I'm gonna basically one, for God's sake. Now I can basically make a rough template of this, elongate that top one a little bit further outwards towards the wheel. And uh, yeah, then we can dial in some adjustability for it basically. But of course, wind it all the way in and get a baseline of where the strut is gonna sit and see if it's gonna work for what we need. The whole reason for this is to get the strut at a nice angle and get the perfect amount of camber for the wheels because we need the camber for the wheels because they don't fit if it's straight. So this is all in the name of making wheels fit. Okay, so this is our old strut. Note how it's like dead straight and we have a little bit of camber on it. If we want to put more camber on the car, the bag then gets close to the body. Now I'm literally just pushing the wheel in on the camber there. Uh, on this side, because the hub is now bolted on a lot closer to the strut, the angle of the strut is, you know, this far further and we can get our whole hand behind the bag now. Whereas on this side, you can barely get your finger, so. When we redo these and elongate the top hole and bring it further out, we should have more swing, which will allow us to have more camber up here without affecting the clearance, basically. And we should be able to run a clearance to the bag. Very confusing, but a very vital and important part. Usually the hub itself will stay within the same bounds because the hub doesn't move this surface in and out, but you know, you can push it in and the angle of the strut will limit you, basically. It's so hard to explain, but I think it makes sense. We've uh, we've done a thing and um, I can now make new ones of these brackets and weld them on and be confident that it's gonna work how I need it to. So having a bit of a play, as you can see, the chassis will comfortably sit on the floor uh, the wheel is tucking a lot. There's quite a bit of camber on there, but we might need that amount of camber. We, I basically took that lower bolt out. Uh, so this is what it looked like on max camber. Obviously the shape of this would actually still bolt on at the bottom. And uh, the bag, we still have clearance behind it. See, we still have clearance. Now, obviously the bag gets wider when it's, uh, gets skinnier when it's inflated. So, you know what I mean? Like there's plenty of clearance to the inside of the bag. We got a lot of camber. We can probably dial some of that back if I'm honest, but yeah, winners. Now I can sort of comfortably say I can make a bracket off of that. Fairly simple because the edge of it is in the middle of that um, hub bolt hole. So yeah. I'll make something up and uh, get that welder to the strut, but it goes high, it goes low, plenty of adjustability, just enough clearance, happy days for everyone involved. It's easy to see now, that strut is at a nice angle, and if we didn't do that low amount and put the same amount of camber on, the strut is then based basically like that, so we don't want that. What I am gonna do is gonna get both the front wheels on and try and get it to sit flush against the ground or close enough. I'm not gonna take it off the ramp because it's a nightmare, but I just wanna get that picture of it like nearly laying on the floor without the front bumper on. I think it will look so funny. So I'm gonna do that. Our sill to floor ratio here 
is uh, now perfect. And if we look here, it looks pretty funky, doesn't it? It looks so cool. Uh, that's the perfect amount of camber, so it doesn't touch the bumper bracket. Uh, this side's got a little bit more camber on it, but you know, we'll figure that out when it comes. To round things up, I'm now happy with how it all works, goes up and down, clearance, etc., which was the biggest grief of this car. Now this car actually doesn't want to go any lower right now. Uh, the bags, <laughs> you can still, oh, there you go. See, look, if I hold that there, that's how far the shock can go, you know, back into the strut. So if we, <laughs> if we want it to go any lower, we've got to put more weight in it somehow it's it's just not light enough it's too it's not heavy enough to fully compress the bags but it's a lot better now than it was with those struts we had a massive pain with so progress this video is very information heavy and i'm not, I'm not worried about it a lot of people seem to like the information videos but there is a lot to film and think about on this build. It's just, it, maybe for a small car, you think, oh, it'd be easy, but no, it's, there's a lot of thought process going into this car. And it's just, just a nightmare, really. Uh, but we're getting somewhere now, finally. So, here we go. These are our new brackets that are gonna weld in place of these two here. Now, as you can see, I've elongated that top hole. So this bolt can go in and out. And I'll show you that now. Plenty of adjustment on that. Easy as that. So now we have the sleeve of the bag strut all cut up, all the remaining edges of it just here, all gone. Get that mocked up on there. I'm gonna weld that onto there. Obviously make sure it's not touching the boot. I've made sure I'm putting these brackets as high up as they go. Number one, it's easier to line up because it sort of bottoms out on that lip there. And also it gets the car lower without having to wind the strut through the body so much. If we if we put it on there, if we mounted it on there like that, we'd have to lower the car a bit more and then it would bring the bag closer to the wheel. So yeah, little things like that will get you extra clearance gains. And obviously we have it tacked on and then I can take it off and fully weld it on the bench. Put those nuts in there so it can't spread apart when you're welding it. Big continuous bead down there. I always tack the ends of the piece that you're trying to weld because if you tack in the middle, it then ruins your weld. So at the end, at the end, done. That last clip got weld all over the front of my phone. So got a little bit lost here. Don't know what happened, but. It's good enough. And that is all one piece. Now, obviously I'm not gonna put the strut in right now because I basically need to get this car off the ramp. And if I put the air strut in, I'm not gonna be able to move it. So yeah, that just needs painting, putting back into the strut. And then we have the front of the Vami bagged. It's a new week and I didn't get the struts on the car because I just got so busy. I had other things coming in and I was going away for the weekend and I was here till like one o'clock in the morning making this little Volvo thing. Um, a present for someone. So I spent a lot of time doing that, but all I need to do now is put the strut on, but we know it fits top and bottom now. So it is going to fit. 
If I did put it on in the video, then I would have to take it back off because we haven't plumbed any of the air system on there anyway. And this needed to be pushed out so I could do another job quickly before I go away this week. Now this week, I am prepping to go to Poland. I won't film any of that. The next video of our trip with the EFA4 will be us driving to Poland and I'll try and edit that on the Thursday night slash uh, Friday morning. Uh, wish me luck, the whole trip is gonna be epic. I'm excited for the weekend, but I just wanted to show that, you know, the car is good and we're ready to go on a big trip, basically. So yeah, get excited for that. But when I'm back, I'll be back on the Ami and I'll start getting it ready to get on the floor and fully working. So yeah, get excited for that. Thank you all for watching. This is a very information filled video, but it's part of the process. So yeah, thank you very much, everyone. See you in Poland. Cheers, goodbye.